we can we can sort of infer how to do it once we have inhomogeneities there. But yeah, but it would just it would change what the um, line integral along this contour is. Yeah. I had a quick question about the lecture video on Friday. Yeah, sure. Um, when you were deriving out, uh, so for the quarter plane solution, and you said, so first, you said first uh, assume your boundary condition u of zero and t equals zero. And then you said, what if it equals h of t? Yes. Right? Um, then you said, Okay, then u of x and t will be able to form just f of x minus ct. What happened to g of x plus ct? Oh, yeah. So that's the case where if you have some initial condition here, yeah, I, I, yeah. So if, if the initial condition is all just zero there along the x axis, and the only uh, non-trivial initial or boundary condition is here, then you have characteristics that just propagate to the right from your conditions. And those characteristics are given by x minus ct equals, you know, s1, x minus ct equals s2. Any characteristic that would propagate to the left from here is going to be out of bounds. And so, okay. and so you only have to worry about the rightward propagating characteristics um, in terms of your solution. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Um, if we had had the initial condition non-zero, then we would have had to worry about. Yeah, then you have to worry about it because you have, then you have contributions from uh, the character the leftward propagating characteristics the way just the way that they carry the initial condition up up into the left yeah okay that makes sense thanks cool. yeah you're welcome yes, sir. i had a question in the homework so sure. uh in the 15th question of chapter three we have ut plus fux equal to zero uh ut okay <clears throat> How do we interpret that f u x equal to zero? What does it mean? So this is this is the book the book problem. Yep. Yep. So how how do I like how do you interpret this PDE or like yeah yeah what does f u x that x what is that oh okay PDE? just that, yeah what is that yeah it's just it's just that you have some function f of u x t it's just the the partial derivative with respect to x of this so by the chain rule you should get f prime of u of x t right u sub x of x t right. So okay. this is so this is the form that you want to write your um, PDE in, right? It's just you you have to do a bit of extra work to get it into the form where you can apply a method of characteristics. So now that's your that's that's your quasi linear PDE that you want to apply a method of characteristics to. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. See you later, Sachin. See you, Kyle. Um, I have a question about uh, 3B. Sure, yeah. And, and defining where the, um, the region where the solution is uniquely determined and yes strong with what does that exactly mean yeah so you you when you solve right so so your your initial data are only defined um on 
on um, y goes from zero to one, right? Yeah. So that's like there, right? And then it's uh, yeah, x equals one, right? Yeah. So you're only going to have, um, I mean, depending on wh where your characteristics go, right? You can only tell what the solution is in some band of the xy plane, right? And then, you know, also behind mm -hmm. it as well, right? So all I want you to tell me is just what what are the bounds of this region, right? Okay. And that's just going to be given by the yeah. characteristic that emanates from the point x equals one, y equals zero, and the characteristic that emanates from the point x equals one, y equals one, right? And you're going to have some region in between where you know the solution. You're not going to know the solution out here, right? No. Because you don't have initial data that you can, you know, propagate to that point based on the way that, you know, the, the characteristics evolve, right? So it depends on where you have initial data and also the way that your characteristics evolve. And your characteristics, remember to get your characteristics, you, yeah. you, know, you, you derive what, what is S of X, Y, and you say that that's equal to, you know, you call it like S1 or something like that, some, some constant mm -hmm. value. So, so equations of this form determine your um, characteristics. So you have to find the one that determines um, the, the lower and the upper characteristic. Okay, thank you. Welcome. And for uh, problem four, how did, how did we get the um, separation t equals x over x plus one? How do we derive that if so we wanted to derive it? Yeah, so that's, so that again is, that's a characteristic. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a bounding characteristic of both of those regions. So you, so this essentially, problem four is you, you have to solve the PDE twice, yeah. right? You have to solve it, you know, you have to solve it once using this boundary data. You have to solve mm -hmm. it another time using this boundary data. And then, yeah, I, uh, what's T, T equals X uh, over X. Okay, so if I, yeah, it's gonna be something like this, right? So this yeah. is your line T equals X over X plus one. So this is just a characteristic that emanates from the point zero, zero. Okay. So again, you're gonna have some formula S of X T. Yeah. Right? And you want to choose, you know, the constant that that equals C, such that um, it intersects the point uh, zero, zero. So, you know, C, C in particular in this case would, I guess, be S of zero, zero in that case. And you should get that characteristic from the, um, as the lower bound on the, you know, on this region and the upper bound on, on this region. Okay, thanks. Um, I had a question about 3.15. So that was the same one brought up with the FU of X. But yeah. when we get to our like almost Riccati equation where we have, I mean, I got DV DT is negative F double prime of U V squared. Do we just assume that F double prime of U is now going to be like a constant when we start integrating with respect to T or how do we, integrate this to show that it's always decreasing like the Riccati equation goes through? Um, 
or am I not going about this the right way? So, I mean, so the way, the reason they set that up right in the book is that you, you just want to get something that you can solve for u sub x, right? Right. So do you, do you already have the implicit solution for u? Uh, yeah, u zero of x minus f prime of u t. Right. So then you, you don't have to go through those steps. You can just um, compute u sub x from this using the chain rule, right? Okay. And you're going to get, you know, some, you know, I mean, it's not that messy, but you're going to have something and it's going to be a fraction and you'll have something in the denominator. And I mean, of course, you, whenever this denominator vanishes, that's when you're going to have the, the blow up point. That's when you get the, the shock, right? right? right. Mm -hmm. And right. so... Yeah, so you, you just want to find um, the minimum value. Um, so yeah, so there's two possibilities, right? So one, one is that um, if uh, phi, if like, you know, if this is always positive, then you never get a blow up and you never have a shock in that case, okay? But if this vanishes somewhere, okay, then the way that you find um, out when that happens is given by the, the shock condition that they give um, in the book, right? Right, the minimum of u prime of x zero or whatever. Right, exactly, okay. yeah. So you just, you, Compute that then, and that gives you the time at which your shock occurs. And then that's okay. that's pretty much all you have to. All right, good to know. I was walking through the whole Riccati thing, thinking that we were doing that to get u sub x, but yeah, I... Yeah, I mean, you could probably get it that way, but if, I mean, if you already have u, then you can just, yeah, you can just right. differentiate u and you're, you're there, yeah. Sounds good. I okay. think you're right. I think you're right, though. Yeah, it's a Riccati equation. You should get like um, some, you know, something of the form, you know, some function divided by one plus another function times t. Uh, yeah, it should be almost the exact same as what we get u sub x from doing this way. So, yeah. it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I'm a little confused what chapter four, problem one, like where that middle region is like, um, cause yeah. the area, I think it, but the area I'm drawing, I can't imagine wow, that could be anything but zero. So, um, Yeah, I can't remember. I, I don't have the book problem in front. But yeah, I, I remember that you have some region of support here, right? And then you have your characteristics that go both ways, right? Um, and you have, right, yeah, so what, so what are you asking just for the first part? I mean, for the first part, it is, it is zero. Right. What well, can make it not zero then? Because if it's outside of the reach of the characteristics. Or... Right. So that, so in the case of um, displacement, displacement, you just, you just propagate, right? So you're, I guess, it's the difference between u of x at zero and u sub t of x at zero, right? And remember, the, the velocity, you don't, the initial velocity, you don't just propagate, you have to integrate it, right? And because you're integrating it, right, anything in the domain of dependence in here can potentially contribute 
to non-zero values in here. Okay. So, so yeah, your intuition for just like, um, just transporting right into left, that's correct in the case of an initial displacement, which would be this. But it's not correct when it comes to the initial velocity because you have to integrate, right? And so whatever's in here, right? I mean, is it in the, I, I think you set phi equal to zero in, or no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what phi is, right? Because because if phi only has support here, you know phi is not gonna to contribute to the solution here. So only psi will, right? Okay. And then according to D'Alembert's formula, u is equal to a half just the integral from x minus t up to x plus t there, right? So that there's, you know, especially if psi here is, is positive everywhere, you know, this, anything in this region could be non-zero. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can prove it to yourself just by plugging everything into D'Alembert's formula and then, you know, just checking specific values of x and t. Um, and for the vicious Burr equation, like question number five, um, how do you find characteristics for that then? Because like, um, I have implicit solution, but I'm not sure how to go from that to characteristics. Yeah, so. So do, do you have, so you, you should have saw if you have an implicit solution. Um, do you have? Do you have an? Ex, I mean, because when you solve everything, you just get like t equals tau, right? For for the mapping from tau back to x and t. Do you have a mapping? Do you have s as a function of x and t? I mean, you probably can't get that explicitly right no that's probably I'm trimming with like uh, I used method characteristics on it but I couldn't simplify it to a clean straight up ask. yeah right you're you're probably only gonna be able to get them implicitly and that's that's it so you'll you'll have so you're 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 not going to be able to get a nice explicit formula okay. like this right but when you saw, you know, you'll solve your, I mean, you probably did something like this, right? So dx d tau equals z, right? Right. X of zero s equals s, right? So then you integrate it up and you get z tau uh, plus s, but then you know what this is. This is like, um, yeah, whatever your f of s is, is equal to x. And then that's, that's it. That's your characteristics. Oh, okay. So it, it, you could leave it in terms of S and tau. You don't have to get all the way to. Well, you, you want S, you, you just want a, an equation that involves S, X, and T. Okay. That'll, you know, that's the closest thing that you can get to characteristics in this case. Okay. Um, oh, S, S tells you how to move along your uh, initial condition, but you don't want you don't want things in terms of tau. You want things in terms of um, x and t. Okay. 
So for this, we obviously we have straight lines like S is X minus UT for our characteristic. But then for like plotting which ones will intersect. We, well, we I, no, I don't think there will be, they're not going to be straight lines, right? Because this is going to be X is equal to F of S T plus S, right? So that if you, let's say I fit, let's say I fix a oh, particular right. value of S. Oh, no, wait. Wait. No, no I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You, they will be straight lines. I'm sorry. You're, you're okay. You're right. You're right. But for doing straight. this and finding which ones intersect, we just pick a value. So like we obviously fix a value of S, but we're looking at our initial condition to see when it's I, I guess, so the plot in the book, you have like some lines that are like straight like this and then they start to bend this way and then the ones right next to it are going more straight again so you get an intersection. How do we know which lines to be drawing as more bent, like slope of more negative or like lower slope than the other ones? Yeah, it's just you, so you want to plot things in the TX plane, right? Right. So this is like, you know, I mean, you're right. This is, this is just a line, right? So the, so the inverse slope of this line is actually just going to be given by F of S. And okay. then the, um, so we literally just look at U zero prime or U zero, whatever the value is, take one over that. So if it's tan, right. we'll then, start having things or like one minus tan, we'll start having things on the, Actually, I guess the whole time they would intersect just at different spots, but. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're just gonna, you're gonna plot all, you know, a bunch of functions of that form. Yeah. Right? Right. Different values of S, right? It's like for, so for S equals zero, you would have, you know, T equals X over F of S, right? Mm -hmm. So this, you know, the slope of this would be something, you know? Right. So, you know, the slope from here will be something. So they're not, you know, if this was like a linear equation, like transport, you know, the, the linear transport equation, then it would just be, then, well, then you would have F of. You'd have a constant. Oh, yeah. Constant. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's not relevant here, I guess, because we've already written out that it's Broca's equation, so we can't make it that way. But, um, I, I follow. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, just as as you change as you change your this is a each of these is a different s value, right? Mm -hmm. S three, you know, S four, S five, or whatever. Right. right? Um, so for that particular s value, right, um, your your x your x intercept is going to be given just by uh, that value of s, right? Right. So this this intercept sex here at the point um, S four zero, right? And then right. The, the slope of it is given by one over F of S. And the graph you drew would be applicable to the first bit, one plus tanch, because that's always increasing as X increases. So then you have- Yeah, so the slope, the the slope, slope bends down, yeah. right? Right, and then and the other case would flip, you'd have the lowest here, and then they'd like start and, something up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so then you're you're running into it, it's a problem if they're steepening because if this one's shallower than this one, that they're going to intersect. Yeah. If they if they fan out, that's fine. I mean, you know, it's fine either way. But it, in this case, you're not going to get any, you know, shocks or anything, right? For sure. Um, and then this is on a separate problem, but we were asked what values of x and y does this solution exist on number three. And is that different than checking the invertibility condition to making sure we can step off the boundaries? Or are you just asking like, once we have a final solution, u of x, y, what values is that literally not defined for? Like on 3a in the denominator, I have like a natural log of y plus y. Are we just asking when is that non-zero, or when is that going to infinity? Or are we asking? Oh, yeah, yeah, else? yeah, because yeah, it's sort of too, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess my question about B is sort of redundant. Yeah, but 
Okay. All right. So it's not the question. The question in B makes sense with you kind of have a region based off your characteristics and the initial data. But for both A and B, we're asked what values of X and Y does it exist? Are we supposed to do the same thing as that region bounding stuff in B? Or are we just supposed to like... Well, it, it's not going to be as much of an issue in A, right? Because in A, you're going to have you have this line and then you have, you know, you have your, you have your, all oh, whatever your, how your characteristics come off of it. I mean, they can, right. they also go off this direction, right? I mean, if you take negative values of, of tau or whatever. Uh, no, but the point is there that you may have, um, you may have a function, you may, you may have functions in your solutions Right. that become you know that diverge to infinity right. or you know that are not defined at some future values of of y so then in that case you would say i i can't know beyond that so like if this characteristic if you hit a point here where you're like you know dividing by zero or something like that then you can't go beyond that point right sure or if there's so, a whole if there's a whole region here, where all of a sudden you hit you hit this line and you, yeah you your your func your function diverges or something like that, then nothing beyond you can't define the function beyond this region. Okay. You can't so continue make sure to propagate we just your bound thing. whatever the max y value or like in the case of a whatever the max y value is that breaks it after our initial data. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, thank you. I think